It's the Orioles on Masson on a beautiful Saturday afternoon at Camden Yards. It's the Orioles of Miami Marlins middle game of this three game interleague series. And hi everyone, I'm Jim Hunter. Thanks so much for joining us. In baseball, of course, it's all about today. So for the Orioles, what today means is look for a win, snap the eight-game losing streak, and then come back and try to do it again tomorrow. But as this 2018 season progresses, today will become the future. The Orioles will be looking ahead, promoting players from the minor leagues to get a look, and possibly acquiring players from outside the organization. And last night, Part of the future was on display as the Orioles dropped the opener 2-0. Two relievers came in, and they are a very big part of the Orioles' future. Miguel Castro and Tanner Scott both worked last night, and they both did very, very well. Two-thirds of an inning scoreless each. Look at Castro, a 1.25 ERA since May the 6th, among the best of all relievers in baseball. And Tanner Scott on the year in his time in the big leagues, 23 strikeouts in just 17 innings. Of course, he has that power fastball, so two of the building blocks for the future of the the Orioles and Jim Palmer as we do move forward we don't know the moves that will be made but one thing we do expect is there will be some youth coming through Baltimore yeah and we saw it again as you mentioned last night so Tanner Scott they you know sixth round draft choice his arm was probably in the what second or third round except that as Scotty McGregor you know who won 18 20 games for the Orioles said he had trouble throwing it in the bullpen because he was so wild so he's come a long long way last year you know got to start three inning starts uh, and it really made a big change and then Castro they get him through uh, a trade uh, and I'll tell you what he's been outstanding you know he was the closer at 19 for Toronto uh, you know that only lasted a while hurt his arm and then the Orioles acquired him in the beginning of 2017 and they've done a marvelous job three pitch pitcher throws a lot of strikes of course when you talk about Tanner Scott he always had the power arm uh, he just said I don't know where it's going well now he knows where it's going the sliders gotten a lot better velocity can get all the way up into uh, triple digits so again you're right and then when you couple that with the fact that Richard Blyer you know he's he's all upset because he's let the team down when he tore his lat it said he's one of those very rare injuries so he'll be gone probably till next year. So these guys are going to get a chance to really prove themselves at this level. Yeah, and uh, this season obviously has not gone as the Orioles have liked. They're stuck on 19 wins. They have been since a week ago Wednesday. But for the younger players, the experience now, that'll pay dividends down the road. Well, it's something you alluded to in your opening. You know, they're looking to the future only because they haven't been be able to play well enough to really be dwell on the present other than trying to win every game you can. So, again, these guys are going to get an opportunity. You know, we, you know, we look at Austin wins. He's been called up to the big league. We we saw uh, Corbin Joseph last night get his first major league hit till 2013. So all of a sudden, guys are getting, you know, they're, they're, they're going to have to prove themselves at his levels. But I came up in 19, and you know what? You had a nice little career, and you know, but it all started <laughs> when you when you show number one, what do I need to do to stay here, and number two, can I play at this level? And it looks like these guys have enough ability to do that. So today, middle game of three, birds looking for a win to snap their eight-game losing streak. Beautiful day at the ballpark. We're coming back to Camden Yards. Lineups at first pitch are next.
Football on Masson is brought to you by Southwest. Low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. And by Antwerpen. Get in the game this season with a new Toyota from Antwerpen Toyota. What a gorgeous day. Uh, warming up. Summer's on the way. Our game time temperature brought to you by BGE Home. We know more. We do more. Well, 86 degrees, but the humidity on the rise. Slight breeze. And we have mostly sunny skies at Camden Yards for the middle game in this three-game series. Let's get a look at that Marlins lineup for today. They were 2-0 winners last night. Dietrich Anderson and Reamuto with Bohr in the cleanup spot. Starlin Castro's at second base. Riddles at short. Lewis Brinson last night. He was the star. Three-game hitting streak. He had two triples last night and drove in a big run. Shuck is in left field. And Rivera today will play at third. So Alex Cobb will try to win for the third time. There is the pitch mix for seam fastball, knuckle curve ball, ground ball pitcher. And of course the splitter, the reason we circle it, uh, that allows him to throw that ground ball, also strikeouts. It's kind of been a pitch that he's been searching for since the Tommy John surgery 2015. Uh, it just gives him a, a, a swing and miss pitch. And so there are the numbers. Um, you know, early on, he didn't sign until March 21st, really did spring training. Uh, at the major league level and it didn't work very well. Flated batting averages. You can see ground ball, fly ball, and home runs, too many. And you can go right down the list. Uh, did not have a good start his last start in Toronto after pitching very well against the Mets. And he said, you know, Jimmy, even in that Met game, wasn't really happy, even though the result was good with his command. So let's see if it's a little bit better, trying to make some mechanical adjustments. And Dietrich first ball swinging will find the gap and that's going to get down and go all the way to the wall. So Jones and Gentry run it down Dietrich thinking three and then he puts on the brakes. So yeah. one pitch there's a runner at second base as Dietrich ambushes Cobb. Yeah and of course uh, in Miami that's the farthest part of their ballpark to right center field. So you come out of the box thinking triple. And again we talked about mechanical adjustments too many balls in the middle of the plate. There is one and. You know, it's a matter of how quickly you get to it, and then if you hit the cutoff, man. Otherwise, he's going all the way to to third base. So he's been red hot. This this is a ball club that, of course, you know they they gave away four of their best players, but uh, they've been playing well. They've won four out of five. You know, last night they did it with pitching and not a lot of offense. Anderson steps to the plate. He drove in the first run. And right the scope at second base. That will advance the runner. There's a good team out. And to third goes Dietrich with one down. Now take a look at the Orioles defense and uh, Rickard Jones and Gentry Valencia Machado scope Mancini and then uh, Austin wins is behind the plate. Yeah, so you're right about that Buck Showalter talking about how they could change the game they could actually now that the, the Marlins will reward Brian Anderson for hitting the ball and getting them under the third because you're going to have to bring the infield in and it makes it a little bit easier uh, for Rio Molto to drive a run in. But again unless you do that when you get your paycheck you know the you know the team concept of moving the runner over sometimes is lost certainly wasn't there. Real Muto the catcher now he'll take a strike. He began the year on the disabled list but since coming off the DL on April 17th he has more hits doubles and his batting average is the best than any other major league catcher. Fifty seven base hits since April 17th. And there's a bouncer towards the hole and there's another and the Marlins get the early one nothing lead. Here's Dietrich to score. So double ground out single and the Marlins break on top. Yeah they only average about three and a half runs a game. So again lately the offense has been a little bit better and you know it's just a ground ball you're playing in no chance to cut it off. And again it's just so much easier when you're just trying to hit a ball hard you don't have to get a base hit as it turns out he does. There's Justin Bohr and he will take a strike on the corner. So now for Alex Cobb Jim it's uh, minimize the damage here. Try to keep this to a one run inning. Cobb now 30 years old. This is his seventh big league season. Or the other way right there is Rickard. Joey has it for the out. Ray Amolto played it halfway and two men down. And so again interleague play and of course this was you know, last year when he went 12 and 10 uh, for the Rays down in Tampa and then before the Tommy John where he was a dominant pitcher. 
You know, you look at the swing and miss. You go back to what 13, 14. They were swinging and misses 22 percent of the time. The next year, before the Tommy John, 26 percent. That's dropped uh, all the way to 16. So again, that splitter doesn't give him a pitch to be able to strike people out. And you know, again, another pitch that the hitters have to look for. Not that he doesn't throw it, Jim. It's just right. it's not as effective. Here's Starlin Castro. First year as a Marlin, he'll take ball one. I was talking to him on the bench, uh, I guess the uh, last week, and uh, he said, "You know, we never really thought much about mechanics down in Tampa Bay," and I was surprised by that. Wow. Yeah, I mean, not that he, he wasn't trying to throw Jim Hickey, who did a great job, who's now with the Cubs under the bus. He said, "It just, uh, I don't know, it was just something that you know, we didn't talk about a lot." So he's been struggling, and it can be the little things. I don't care how long you pitch. Are your hands? We used to always break our hands over our knees, and the reason uh, they taught that in the Oriole organization is, you know, every time you wind up, you may speed it up a little bit, but you knew there was a checkpoint. So now he he feels that he just hasn't since the Tommy John and the late signing be able to really sync up his wind up. So, you know, he throws hard enough, 91 to 93, but again, when you pitch in the middle of the plate at this level, I don't care who you are, you're not going to have a lot of success. It's interesting to hear that because Tampa Bay, they're an organization. They love to draft high school pitchers as they did with Alex and then bring them along very, very slowly. He was in his fifth professional season, had 90 somewhat minor league starts, and they finally said, hey, kid, come on up and start. And they liked him so much he went right back to AAA. Yeah, I was really surprised when he said that. And, uh, you know, again, maybe a little bit of from a stretch. And I, I said, well, you need to find, uh, you know, a little guideline, a little checkpoint. You can see he's very quick to the plate so they don't run on him a lot over the course of his career. Great pickoff move does a lot of things to help you win. But uh, the, the bottom line when you're pitching if you don't get a lot of run support and he doesn't I mean, he's getting two point eight nine runs and then your ERA is over seven. You're not going to win a lot of games. Yeah that would be the third lowest if he qualified to be among the league leaders which he does not because of his innings pitched. Is that a swing and a miss? I believe it is. Wins will play at the first, and that'll do it. So a nice job by Cobb as he gets out of it with just the one run. We head to the bottom of the first, and here come the birds. Enjoying the summer like weather We're within a week now Jim of summer let's get a look at the Orioles starting lineup presented by Southwest low fares with nothing to hide that's transparency all right handed lineup again with Gentry in the leadoff spot Adam Jones his bat is coming around five for his last 14 Machado Valencia Mancini's at first and scope and Trumbo with Rickard and left Austin wins doing the catching. So Wei and Chen, I'm certainly familiar with him. You know, fastball pitcher has the slider, curveball, occasional changeup. He'll turn it over every once in a while, but he's a power guy. You send right-handers up there, and the Orioles are doing that today. He'll try to establish low and away, and then get you out up and in. So you can see had a little bit of trouble doing that the last four starts. They hadn't been able to get to to the fifth inning. 
But again when he, th he throws a lot of strikes and he's usually pretty aggressive in the strike zone. And Gentry with a base hit off the glove of Rivera. Boy, Gentry's really been swinging the bat. He didn't waste any time. So each leadoff hitter a base hit on the first pitch. Yeah, one was a double. And, of course, you know, they're looking fastball. And he's only 91 now. He used to be about 93 to 94 when he pitched with the Orioles. So Scott Coolbaugh, and there's 91 miles per hour the other way. So 91 to the plate, 91 into left field. And, you know, I know Scott Coolbaugh. I mean, they get the same numbers we do. They get to look at film. They get to know that, he, you know, he's been struggling a little bit. They know that his velocity is not what it used to be. Elbow problems the last two years after signing with the Marlins. So Gentry on for Adam Jones. Of course, Gentry leads the Orioles with 10 steals, but with Chen on the mound, a little tougher assignment. Yeah, I don't know if you'll do it in the first inning with Jones and. and uh, Machado and Valencia coming up who can hit the lefties pretty well. I mean, they, you know, you can always go on the first move. I mean, of course, Gentry can steal bases against anybody, but. Yeah. And there's a 5 4 3. So just like that, two down, that erases the leadoff base runner. Now, take a look at the defense for the Marlins, a little bit different uh, than last night with Rojas uh, getting hit in the hand, Chuck Brinson and Anderson. Uh, uh, Rivera comes in and Riddle shortstop last night Castro bore and then uh, Rio Muto uh, doing the catching who's one of the better throwing and hitting catchers in the, the National League. Yeah one little pitch fastball for a base hit Adam gets the one fastball swings fouls it off and then a slider gets the double play ball. Well here's Manny. And at 306 he is now just outside the top 10 in batting. And he is still having a real good season. Tied for eighth in base hits with 79, fifth in home runs with those 18 you saw, and he's still third in RBIs with 50. And with not a lot of protection around him. Ground ball into the shift. That's Castro, the second baseman. And a five pitch inning for Wei Yan Chen on a mound he is very comfortable on. We head to the second, 1 0 mark. moment later in today's game. Here's the b &O Museum beautiful view. On a lovely day in Baltimore. Nice weather a lot of fans out here and there's shirt of sleeves yep. a lot of orange it looks like hunting season. It's a, a dugout club day so a lot of kids in the ballpark. And Alex Cobb back to work after allowing a run in the first. Coming off a loss last Sunday in Toronto he was knocked out in the fourth inning but prior to that the start Jim talked about he was very solid against the Mets. First ball swinging is JT Riddle that chases Jones back way out there and it's off the wall. He plays the carom nicely but there's another leadoff double. 
Yeah again the, the splitter it, you know it's just a fastball it's up out over the plate Adam makes a great play playing it off the wall I think he thought he had a chance to, to catch it. So I mean it's blasted it's not like it's down the middle and watch this catch. I mean the ricochet right to the glove otherwise it's a triple at the inside of Parker the other day. So again runs well that ball certainly could have been an inside the park home run if it does not go right into the glove of Adam Jones. So it looks like the scouting report for the Marlins against Cobb is go early. Well look fast ball if he hangs a curveball and got him in trouble in Chicago earlier. It was Brinson first ball swinging Gentry a long run that's going to be back in the crowd. So until you show him either you can make good pitches with the fastball I mean. Ninety one kind of belt high out over the plate average major league fastball is right around ninety three now. Uh, that's not usually going to get a lot of hitters out especially if you're looking for it. Now you throw that same pitch down and away or on the inside quarter of the plate. So you got to slow the bats down some way. And that's what the splitter and the curveball do. Rinson is really coming on. He got off to a very slow start. He was the key piece in the Kristen Yelich trade. They appealed no swing. And he's batting Jim 302 in the month of June. And to give you an idea of how much he was struggling his season average is still only 179. Yeah. Well he's hit to what the three home runs and 10 RBIs hit the two triples last night. Plus the fender. Traded uh, Kristen Yelich for him who was you could plug in about 280 with uh, 18 to 80 RBIs. And he's having a nice year for. The Brewers In fact it was a four to one trade. You know, Yelich going over to the Brewers and they get four players. And as we documented, Don Mattingly looking on, saying, hey, we have some prospects. They made 12 trades and got 21 prospects. 12 high, high ranked prospects over the last year. Two and two on the foul ball. Well, with Brinson, Mattingly said that the, the biggest difference this month is he's finally improved his plate discipline. Young hitter he must be anxious chasing pitches and now he's understanding calm down and improve that discipline. Yeah. And Mattingly would know he had two thousand one hundred fifty three hits in a 14 year career. Well we were talking and we look at his numbers I mean he's. You know he's a Hall of Fame player. Probably even in my I mean he he was like a meteor because of the back. But he had probably five or six of the best years you ever could have. Mm -hmm. Nine gold gloves. I mean one year he got up uh, 677 times and struck out 35 times. Now if you don't know where the barrel of the bat. <laughs> lifetime 300 hitter. Three times he yeah. had 200 hit season nicknamed Donnie baseball. Check swing and it's low and how about uh, improved plate discipline. In fact uh, both teams are, are on the rise in that. And well you again you know cold weather early on for a lot of the ball clubs and you know Marlins of course play in the dome stadium down in Miami so maybe the weather depending where they are it won't affect them as much the Orioles we remember how the weather was in oh, yeah. some of the cities along the way. There's a slow roller that will advance the runner Manny's got a hurry and he got him by a step nicely done by Machado. So that advances the runner and one down. Well we hope you can join us out here tomorrow on Father's Day finale against the Marlins. And the first 20,000 fans 18 and over receive a Father's Day necktie. Plus kids can run the bases after the game presented by Wise Markets. Tickets at Orioles.com. And there's the necktie. Yeah I actually have one. Uh, somehow I pilfered one. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I pilfered it from you. Oh did you. OK. <laughs> well you'll wear it. I won't. You wear those. Mortician suits it'll go perfectly. Oh my goodness. <laughs> This is blue by the way. OK well it looks black. Ye yesterday was black. <laughs> you say so I'm a day off. <laughs> <laughs> so Jay, uh, Jay, uh, J.B. Shuck uh, you know he gets four hits in the 16 inning game on Thursday and then last night. The one thing he's not doing well this year is uh, runners in scoring position only two for 20. Scope comes up he's going to go yeah. to first. Yeah we made the right play. So that's back to back innings where you got to bring your infield in. I mean, Cobb makes a very good pitch to get the ground ball, but Chuck runs well. So again, does little a riddle. So what happens is you don't have a play, and that's a smart play. I mean, I think emotionally, when you're not scoring runs, you want to come home. 
and he gets to it quickly has the strongest arm of any second baseman in baseball but he judiciously takes the the out at first otherwise you would have had a run score and a man on first. So a couple of manufactured runs two nothing Miami here's Yadiel Rivera who was at third base because of Miguel Rojas last night was hit by a pitch he's day to day fortunately no break just the contusion. Yeah, apparently he broke his hand last year and missed a, a number of games and so he was very happy not getting hit but the fact that it, it didn't break anything. Here's Miguel on the bench. And he has some kind of a brace on that hand. And strike three called. Got it on the outside corner. That'll end the inning. Marlins get another mid second, 2 0 Miami. Slump at the plate. Look at these major league rankings. So with their loss last night, the Orioles are now three and twenty-seven in games in which they score two runs or less, and the thirty games in those games, second most. Three and twenty-five when they don't hit a home run. That is the lowest in the major leagues. They now have twenty-one games, five hits or less, as they did last night. That is the most in the major leagues. Eight games they've been shut out, the second most, and the run support for starters. Jim talks about this all the time. 3.46 for the Orioles starters. That is the lowest support of the 30 teams in Major League Baseball. Tough to win with those kind of numbers. Which is why they're not winning. Here's Danny Valencia. And a big breaking ball for a strike. Mancini on deck and then scope. I mean, it's really kind of down the line. Whether it's average, they're 15th out of 15 games on base percentage. Uh, you know, 12th and stolen bases. You know all the, the things 15th obviously when you're in RBIs because you're not your 15th in runs home runs. Usually they're in the top four usually maybe even leading the back their 10th. And we know I mean, after what the last three four years 47 to 49 percent of their home runs are via the home run. Don't manufacture a lot of runs because they don't have a lot of speed. But you've always been able to live with it a little bit because they hit home runs. Right. And, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of weavers a lot of three run home runs. You know. you know they have lost 10 consecutive home games and eight in a row overall. And over a longer stretch the birds have lost 15 of their last 17 games. They had a seven game losing streak then they won the two games against the Mets in New York and they have since lost eight straight. So a rough go for Buck and the birds. That's a broken bat bloop but right to Justin Bohr at first. And one away here in the Orioles second. Our Maryland lottery contestant of the game Abraham Merlos of Hyattsville has won five hundred dollars for being selected and will win five hundred dollars more for every Orioles home run hit in the game today. You can play home run rich and scratch offs and win up to fifty thousand dollars or enter non winning tickets for a chance to be the contestant of the game. Visit mdlottery.com slash home run. Ray Mancini, he'll take a strike. 
Yeah I think the one number for Wei and Chen coming off elbow problems and actually started the year on the DL because of an elbow strain is 22 walks in 39 innings. So we'll see if he's actually a little bit of wild. The Orioles need help. I mean if you're not going to work the count something they've never really been adept at you, you want somebody that maybe has a little bit of a command problem and we'll see if that comes into play. You know Manny's looking on knowing hey, I'm not getting the kind of pitches I got to hit in April and, and May. You know the league is adjusted not that he can't hit because he can we all know that it's just you saw it with the, you know, the Orioles are going to go to Washington the next week Bryce Harper walked but 37 times in April and four in May. So I think he got tired of walking. <laughs> Backs him off the plate. Well Chen is certainly comfortable here at Camden Yards. This is his 60th career start at Oriole Park. Of course the first 59 of those as an Oriole. And he was a very popular teammate. It was just a financial. I mean, Marlins offered him a better deal, and off he went. Yeah, a much better deal, and those are the numbers you were alluding to right there. And you know, a fly ball pitcher, even this year, not that pronounced, with 57 coming in in the air, 43 on the ground. So he definitely throws more fly balls, and this is a home run haven for fly ball pitchers. There's a bouncer to second base. Starling Castro will get him a two men down. Well, let's take a look at Chen and where he ranks in Orioles history. Most wins in first four seasons and you were very complimentary earlier when we talked about this during the production meeting about Steve Barber. Well Steve Barber he was the first Oriole that ever win 20 games and then you know, Dave McNally uh, you know in 68 I think uh, Steve did it in 63 Mike Messina headed for the Hall of Fame you know, Dennis Martinez more games won than any Latin pitcher in the are, are you one of those three no, tied pro I don't I probably not because I was hurt and uh, I didn't really start my first year. Started my second year and then three and one and tore my rotator cuff so didn't pitch in 68. Then it got a little bit better. Yes it did. All time franchise leader in wins I would say it did. Jonathan Scope two and the count. Jonathan needs a, a broken bat flare right here just to calm down. Well how about a, a, a broken bat fly ball into the seats and left that'll work. And a strike at the knees. Yeah, he is. A, he, you know, he's got a very quick arm. When we talk about Wei and Chen, I mean, everything's very relaxed, and the ball jumps out. You know, again, it used to be 93, 94. The ability to pitch right where the Real, uh, Real Muto is going, and but right here, and again, we talked about the problem when you're hitting 207. You don't want to walk. Hmm. He fouls it back three and two. Well, Jonathan comes in. He's 0 for his last nine. First time he's ever faced Wei and Chen. And over a longer stretch, Jim, he is two for his last 36. Well, that's what, but my point about not wanting to walk, he wants to get on base, but your average doesn't go up if right. you walk. It, it, it gets you better pitches, it helps the team. It's just the human nature of hitting. There you Let's go. take the walk there. So the Orioles get a base runner with two down. Well, we saw him walk last night. So, okay. Got to be a little more patient. You know, you made a good point about what the Marlins are able to do, whether it's Lewis Brinson or, you know, a young player or whatever, is you got to know the strike zone. You got to make the other pitcher throw strikes. If you don't, you're helping them out. So, again, so you're, you're down 2 nothing. You're really struggling for runs. Jonathan just took a walk. And, I mean, you got a guy that three years ago led the major leagues and home runs with 47. Here's Mark Trumbo. You saw Jose Arena there on the bench. He pitched eight shutout innings last night and I went down to the Marlins clubhouse to get their lineup and he came out of the weight room there. He's a big guy. I didn't realize how big he was. And he was in there doing the uh, I guess the heavy work day after he starts. There's a mile high fly ball to shallow left. JT Riddle the shortstop will put it away and the O's go down in the second. A walk a man left through two, two nothing Miami.
sharing a photo or video with hashtag hats off for heroes. For each post, T-Mobile will donate one dollar to support veterans. Well, old glory. It was a couple of days ago was flag day. Didn't get to wear my flag tie because we were off. I love the flag tie. Should have wore it today. Could wear it tomorrow on Father's Day. Could Do you have a Father's Day flag or a tie? Uh, I'll look. Except it's going to be 92. Oh, so you know what that might be. Yes, I know what that means. Here's Derek Dietrich. The Oriole bird will make an appearance. Yeah, see, so fastball for a double up the gap, and then the next time we talked about slowing the bat down, the splitter. Sometimes you just have to change your uh, your your pattern. That same fastball, if you establish your other pitches, might be popped up or skied to center. There's a fastball inside corner. The one thing about hitters kind of tell you what you need to do, and hopefully you hang around long enough to be able to make the adjustments. Alex Cobb certainly has the ability and experience to do that. Mm -hmm. And a three pitch yeah, strikeout yeah. after a double his first at bat. Yeah first pitch double and then all of a sudden OK splitter fastball inside corner moved it from where he hit the double out over the plate and then back to the split fingered fastball. And again it, it's you know a lot of times when you work the count in your favor not the hitters favor you don't even have to throw a strike which is exactly what he did. Here's Brian Anderson who's enjoying a tremendous rookie season. And he remains the only rookie to have played in every game for his team. Impressive young man. Well I mean even the, the fact that he gave himself out you get the runner at, at third. And uh, you know he or second with a double he just you know I mean looked like he could do it. He just routinely hit a ground ball to the second baseman. Yeah bring your infield in and then as it turned out. Real Muto uh, got a base hit, but the fly ball would have scored. Him. I mean, that's team baseball. When they played in college at the University of Arkansas, and it's pretty amazing how many talented players have come out of there. And we just saw one here earlier yeah. this week with Andrew Benatendi. Did we ever? Yeah, I mean Benatendi, what number? First round draft pick. Yeah, well, number seventh guy picked in 2015 in the big leagues. In 2000. Yeah, the very next year. Yeah, next year. Yeah. Well, there's a four pitch walk with one down. The first walk allowed by Alex Cobb. Fans, the Orioles take on the Mariners some afternoon baseball. Write it down Thursday, June 28th. It'll be a 305 game, and a special ticket package is available for purchase for fans that are 60 and over. It includes a lower level or club level ticket in the shade and an Orioles travel umbrella. Now, the ticket packages are limited, and umbrellas are only available through the special offer. Visit Orioles.com slash seniors and get your ticket package today. That ball's crushed to center field. Rayamuto got into it. Jones is back, and that ball is gone. It's into the Oriole bullpen. Rayamuto stays red hot, his eighth home run, and it's 4 0 Miami. I was watching some of the games the other day, and uh, you know, Michael Hill, who's the president of baseball operations, was talking about JT and he was saying this is one of the things he's starting to do backspin balls so he's always been a great receiver he hit well last year and in this ballpark with the wind blowing out on a warm day watch this ball it is pretty much right down the middle so again good swing I mean straight away power backspinning the ball a little bit gets a little bit more carry and then again it's all about launch angle and that gets the ball in the air and so again that the, the dreaded fastball. And that doubles their lead. Twelfth farm run allowed by Alex Cobb. Foul tip straight down at the plate so nothing and two on Justin Bohr. He was back home he went to George Mason University in Fairfax. Alex Cobb was signed out of Vero Beach High School when he was drafted. Mm. Close pitch. Yep, just missed. Well, another power guy when he's healthy. I mean, 25 home runs last year and only 377 at bats. That's a lot of home runs for Bohr. Check swing at a breaking ball and he gets the call two and two. Yeah, it, the the curveball is a good one. I just found that the overhand curveball, mine was similar to his. It, it's hard to spot. There's another splitter. So you throw it and you get the break, but 
you know fastballs you even splitters you can throw for the corners curve ball you're just trying to keep it down. Unfortunately and we saw this in Chicago where he, he kind of cruised into the fourth inning and then they had about five straight curve balls for base hits. And the count holding two and two. Strike three called. Yeah, he does it in there on him. Nice little uh, Nissan pitch track's going to show you how this uh, two seam fastball. What should run back? So he gives up. He's yo, I, I'm going get another pitch. And watch it ball just move left to right, catches the inside court. Cost Austin wins is sitting right there, and that ball does hit the corner. The overhead camera does not lie. And Austin wins. He he received that very quietly. It's also it's nice to hit the glove exactly where he's sitting, which is what he happened right there. And there's yep. a big curveball. Castro struck out his first at bat. One of the few hitters in the lineup who has uh, extensive at bats against Cobb, if you'll call 11 extensive, because of his time with the Yankees and Cobb's time with Tampa Bay. He's now one for 12 against them head to head. Yeah, I knew that. Uh, Starling Castro wore out the Orioles last year when he was playing with the Yankees when he wasn't having the hamstring problems but between June 9th and September what he had four home runs 11 RBIs he went 15 for 35 with a six game hitting streak five home runs and 12 RBIs and down on strikes here the big breaking ball wins will tag him out and that'll do it but damage done Two run home run by Ray Amuto for nothing Miami. See, make today the day. And by Visit Annapolis, create your moment at visitannapolis.org. I'm sure a lot of folks heading to Annapolis on this beautiful day, 4 0 Miami. Yep, you need one of those hats today. Bright sunshine. Orioles come up here in the third against Wei In Chen, who is making his first career start against his former team. He's only eight and nine in Miami since going there for the big five year deal. But as Jim alluded to it's uh, all the injuries have held him back and he even began this year on the disabled yeah, all elbow related. Tommy John uh, before he came to the United States early on in his career. There was another bloop Castro will back up. Well the ability to throw a lot of strikes and pitch in. So if you're looking away and you're still going to swing until you get to two strikes. I mean this is one of the problems you have to know you when when you go down and watch the Orioles hit or a lot of the teams you know the Marlins do it do they actually have because you take you take home plate at 17 inches wide you take seven baseballs. So until you get the two strikes because when you have to hit with two strikes year in and year out the average is about 175. Now what does that tell me as a former pitcher it's hard to hit with two strikes. So if you're going to chase everything before then. You're trending in the wrong direction. So they have these little charts. You would either hit the inside four or the outside four. So if you're looking away and swing at the inside four, you hit those little lazy pop ups. 
even though you're looking fastball you, you, you guess right you just don't guess the right part of the plate and they never call you out on strike one they never call you out on strike two they call you out on strike three the good hitters number one make you throw it over and the, and the good hitters swing at strikes there's a base hit for Austin wins and again you know subjugate your ego stop worrying about home runs and actually just do what Austin wins does. I mean the best hitter on the Marlins is Brian Anderson. This is what he does. He's got 25 hits to right field. 28 times multi hits. I mean that's not that's just trying to get a base hit. So Austin now in six big league games he has a base hit for those six. So you want to go up and try to hit home runs it sometimes it works but. Just think you get up maybe 650 times you hit 32 home runs. What are you doing the other 628 times. That's what that's the difference between the really good hitters and the other guys. The tough outs. Jen now 32 years old facing Craig Gentry who singled on the first pitch he saw in the bottom of the first. You know, he's having a nice uh, a little June he's nine for 17 that's almost 500. Jen falls behind two and oh. Yeah, just have I mean put a two run spot on the, the board here in the third and you know, their bullpen is the ERA other than their closer Kyle Bearclaw it's not the greatest they're over ERA is over five runs a game. Yeah. Jen hasn't pitched five innings since the last time he pitched five innings about uh, all the way back on May 20th. So get him out of there. Fastball on the inside corner. Yeah. Well, that's all right. If you're looking away, you take that pitch. And Gentry, he's obviously, you know, he's seeing the bat well. He's got cool by with saying he's finally realized, and you know what it hitting is about, especially when you don't hit home runs, and he's not a home run guy. Do I know where the bat hit? Where the barrel of the bat is? That's because that's what I'm trying to do with that ball that's coming up there. Hit the back of it. Check swing, they'll appeal, and he went. Oh. Chris Conroy at first base. Well, the, it's always the opposite umpire. He's looking at exactly at that, and you can see how far that bat had went out. And so he can see how far the barrel of the bat actually travels. That should be mandatory on check swings. Ask the base umpire. Usually is, yes. and yeah. unless they really see it. See now, all of a sudden, everything changes when you get the two strikes, which is why it's so difficult to hit with two strikes. Greg Gentry now I mean you know he's no different than any but he's got to cover inside corner outside corner up down in out soft hard. Chen's got four pitches. So that's why if you're a pitcher you want to get ahead and get the two strikes and if you're a hitter you want to make something happen on your terms until you get to these situations. Breaking ball popped up. Four is over and he's got to play two down. And a nice little pitch there because it was a little breaking ball, not a fastball. 3 2. Is Adam Jones bounced into a 5 4 3 double play his first at bat, but he is one of the few Orioles who is hitting. Last 18 games, he's 25 for 73. That is a 342 clip for Adam. And for the first time this year, uh, he's creeped into the top 10 in hits. He's now got 77 hits, and here's the most infield hits of active players. Yeah, that's over what 11 years. I mean, last night got one of the three yeah. hits. It was a bunt. They're down by two nothing. Bunted his way on. Right field out of Chase Anderson back still going back and it's over his head and against the wall heading to third is wins he will be sent by Bobby Dickerson and a late stop sign and a good late stop sign as that ball came all the way to the plate. Yeah well Castro's got a pretty good arm because he was a former shortstop. You know Anderson looks like I mean, he's already got uh, a, a bunch of assists out there but this ball's belted so again new ballpark takes a look right here once again gets to it pretty quickly. But again when you're struggling for runs I think there's a tendency if you're Bobby Dickerson the third base coach well I'm going to send him and he actually has pretty good speed. Now obviously he's he's just fallen because he stopped him. But yeah, the he, last thing you want to do with Manny Machado coming up when you're struggling for runs is get Austin wins thrown out of the plate 
and it looked like that probably would have happened. So a nice little decision by third base coach Bobby Dickerson. Yeah, he was sending him until he wasn't. Yeah. Well, that's the way you do it, and that's why you get down the line. I mean, you're trying to look at the runner, you're trying to gauge his speed, you're trying to see whether the, the cutoff man was hit. There are a lot of factors when you when you coach third base. And it's not like you get to, when you're doing a commercial, you got to go take two. Uh -uh. It's real time. Manny has hit 380 this year with runners in scoring position. 312 for his career. That's a pretty good number. So a chance to chip back in it here. And we'll take a two out base hit. Yeah, and again, if you're way in Chen, are you going to, I mean, how are, are you going to pitch to him? You got a 4 nothing lead, and you got a guy that wears out lefties on deck, and Danny Valencia. But this is Manny Machado. And he knows, he may not know 380, but they know that you're looking at one of the best hitters in baseball, especially with runners in scoring position. So who are you going to pitch to? The wins at third, Jones at second, but two men down. Manny right center field. There's a base hit for Machado, and the O's get on the board. Wins to score, Jones to score, and it's a 4 2 game in the third. Big, big two out base hit for Machado. Well, for every 100 at bats with runners in scoring position, he's getting 38 hits. Well, that number just went up. So you want the Orioles back in the game? Pitch to this guy. And here's a great approach. This is inside out. You know what's interesting about that swing? He was out here today at noon with Scott Poolball working on that exact swing. He was in the cage. I, I'm not exaggerating. Maybe half an hour. He would take a break and then get back in. That exact swing, the right side. Well, field. spring training was all about the right-handed hitters. Can you hit a line drive over the second baseman's head? Where was that? Over the second baseman's head. And if you're left-handed, could you hit a line drive over the shortstop's head? Just, I mean, this is spring training. This is to stay on the ball, make it harder. You know, you can wait a little bit longer. You can hit more breaking balls. Well, that was a pretty unselfish swing in the sense he didn't try to do too much down by four. All right, so here this was early today. This was uh, around noontime. Manny in the cage working on his swing. See him staying inside the ball where you don't try to hit around it. And I mean, it was just Manny and Scott Kubal out there working. See there, you see him looking the opposite way there. So the practice translated into the game. Yeah, that and the fact that Chen pitched to him. There's Scott Coolball. He works so hard with these hitters. Well, some listen, some can adjust, and some can't. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Rolls over on it, pulls it foul. I mean, let's look at the numbers. Uh, you know, last year the Orioles, they win 17 games in. August they score over six runs a game and then they go seven and twenty one if you count the one game in October scoring three runs did Scott Kuba forget how to teach hitting in September I don't think that's the case so, you know, everybody can talk about you got to change your coaches and you got to do you know sometimes the, the, the hitters think it's a little bit easier pitching is a little bit easier than it really is and a base hit for Valencia so the O's coming alive here in the third inning. Last night they had three hits for the game. They have four hits this inning. Well, Danny Valencia, he's you know he makes his living where against lefties. So if you get behind him, quick bat right there, trying to get a fastball by him on the inside, maybe quarter of the plate, leaves that out over a great angle right here. Look out for the bat head. I mean, back of the ball. That's it. Contact. If he elevates that ball, it's a home run. The game would have been tied. He hits a line drive at the left. Juan Nieves, the pitching coach, went out for a chat. Well, we've seen him go away from the changeup. You know, when we saw him, a lot of times, I mean, he could be real overpowering, and then the second time through an order, you know, all of a sudden they adjust a little bit. You know, he's better into righties than away. Does have a changeup, but he was never one of those conventional side to side guys. It was more over the top, try to ride the ball by the hitters. Direct one to yeah. Trey Mancini. Yeah, and there's your changer. 
after a one said hey. What about an off speed pitch. <laughs> and see he bounced out to second his first at bat he is now two for 17 on the homestand. And just nine for his last 46 so below 200. Over his last 13 games. But he can go to right field with the best of them. Well he can hit the ball everywhere. And I mean that's why he had such a great rookie year and. You know obviously they've made some adjustments. Uh, I just think he you know he did run into the wall. He's moving more than spring training. He said, I said what are you going to try to change. He said I just want to make sure I stay behind the ball and he did a pretty good job till the collision sliding into the wall here at Camden Yards. Tried to time that off speed breaking ball and he swung through it. So Chen gets ahead one and two. So change up slider. Couple of breaking balls in the first three pitches. Well, Chen needed 24 pitches total to get through the first two innings. He's thrown 25 here. And see, he fights it off to stay alive. Trey, one home run and one RBI in his last 69 at bats. Yeah, it's, it's just an amazing number. And Machado's at second, Valencia at first with two down. That's a good take. Yeah, Chen is uh, no different than most of the guys. Uh, you know, if you start looking three times through the order, 200, 270. So you've seen him for the second time, which is what the Orioles are doing there. And then, like we said, he really has not been able to pitch. Uh, with exception of a couple of times more than five innings then it goes to 522 third time through the order. Now, huge chance here to have a big inning something the Orioles don't do very often. Couldn't square it up but at least he fouled it off. Well another change up so he's just thinking you know that two strike mode. Machado came through with a big two out two run single Manny now with 52 ribbies. This will be the seventh pitch here to Mancini. High chopper to third there's Rivera. And he slings it the first in time to get Mancini and that will end the inning but the Orioles get back in it two runs on four hits through three four to two Miami. Baseball is brought to you by the all-wheel drive RAV4. Toyota, what drives you? Visit buyatoyota.com for great deals. A lot of youngsters here today. It is a dugout club day. And really good to see all the families here. Yeah, well, that's one of the, it's always been one of the great uh, traditions of Oriole baseball since I've been here and even before the dugout club. 
And the kids used to be Jeffrey. another junior Orioles and all that. I'm sure. used to. Pitch cheer free deal. You, the parent can buy a ticket, bring up to two kids. Oh, yeah, years I mean, that's, that's, that's one of the great. Wonderful deal. Great bargains in, in, in any industry. Here's JT Riddle leading off. So if you're Alex Cobb, obviously, you know, you give up uh, one, one, and two. Two run home run breaks your heart. So, but again, been around the, the, the block often enough. He knows right here. Shut down inning. Chen's on the ropes. That's your job. Just get Riddle out. Solve the riddle, so to speak. Jones in center field that chases him back. And he runs it down on the warning track. Yeah, I'm getting a pretty good idea that JT Riddle likes the high pitch. The one away here in the fourth. The Orioles host the Mariners Monday, June 25th through Thursday, June 28th. And in the Monday game, first 25,000 fans 15 and over receive a Buck Snowwalter snow globe. We'll celebrate halfway to Christmas Day right here at Oriole Park. Get your tickets, Orioles.com. That'll look good with your Christmas decoration. Well, it goes right with the gnome from last year. Yeah. The Buck gnome. That gnome ends up all over the place at our house. Bonnie's always moving him. And now that it's nice, he'll probably be in the garden. Remember, I don't remember how many years ago, but I just remember when they had. It was last year, I think, because we went into a long losing streak. Yeah. With the gnome? Yeah, with the gnome. Because you, I mean, you understand the Orioles did start out 2017, as you know well, 22 and 10. And then from that point, they went 53 and 77. So it, the gnome, yeah. And I think it started right about when they gave the Noma. <laughs> so it wasn't a good luck gnome. So maybe the uh, snow globe will be better. There's a chopper to third. Big hop for Valencia. And when is it? Uh, the 25th. Of halfway to Christmas. June. June. Can we move it up? Because the Orioles need a win. <laughs> well, if you move it up, it won't be halfway. I understand that, but we need a win. <laughs> Getting my point? I agree. <laughs> Bad I'm, luck, no. I'm trying to work good with luck, you. Good luck. Uh, but the calendar is the walking. calendar. Well, you can't move Christmas Day, so you can't move halfway to Christmas. Well, I know they have probably have them already. There's always a oh, I prototype. See, hey, I we need see to get what there. your yeah. point is. I get it. Well, that's actually on the next homestand, so. Yeah, but they're going to play the Nats in, in Atlanta. So we need we need immediately help. Maybe the tie will help. You know, get the dads in a good mood. Two and zero on JB Shuck batting with two outs and nobody on Cobb and out away from his first clean inning. Yeah, when you're struggling like Alex is, boy, you don't, you know, you know how important it is to not only have a shutdown inning, but do it as quickly as you can, efficiently. Goodbye. Yep, there's a strike. Nice little inside corner. Right field, there's Gentry. And he's got it for the out. So there you go, Jim, the shutdown inning. Miami in the fourth goes three up, three down.
A four to two game. As the Orioles uh, come to bat now in the bottom of the fourth. They trailed four nothing but Machado with a big two run single. Here's Jonathan Scope. Now give you an idea of how tough it's been for the Orioles scoring runs. And as Jim mentioned they, they do come in last in the league in runs scored. And averaging 3.4. The last time they scored at least five runs in a game was June the second against the Yankees and they lost that game eight five. They actually have a winning record in game scoring five or more runs 13 and eight but it's been since June 2nd and today's June 16th. So how about when you score I mean, usually the demarcation of winning and losing is four runs a game. What's the record with. Well the Orioles four runs or more and when you're again when you're 19 and 49 you're not you're not winning even some of those games which is usually a very very high percentage I would think probably in the 70 percentile. Good staying alive swing by Jonathan there on the change up down and away. They are. 13 and 12 when they score five or more runs. Or excuse me four or more runs. Yeah. 13 and 12 four or more runs. Yeah it looks like a C.B. Buckner making you throw it over today been pretty consistent. Nobody's turning around. Scope to left center field. Brinson can run him yeah. down. And yeah, he does. He looks like Byron Buxton of the Twins, who won the Platinum Gold Glove, very lopes to the ball. Well, the Orioles not only have lost eight in a row overall, they have lost 10 straight at home. And here are the numbers, Jim, in the last 10 home games. And the, the number there of runners in scoring position. That yeah. Well, then today. It, it, yeah. Well, again, the average, of course, uh, if, if you're good with math, three times 14 is 42. And the reason and who knows if that's not that's probably not your average. And then of course the reason is the 83 with runners in scoring position five for 60. So you get them on you just don't get them in. Orioles are two and ten in the month of June. Trumbo the other way long run back for Anderson that's off the wall. Trumbo thinking two. Anderson can throw it and it's a little bit too high and Trumbo hustles in with a double. Yeah, you, you can see why Brian Anderson, uh, you know, he's, he's a terrific hitter, but he also got four assists. I mean, he's almost leading the rookies first or second and everything. So, again, I mean, he plays this ball, bare hands, and the throws just a little off. So, so, all of a sudden, we see Trumbo making some changes. He's opening up his back foot. You know, again, he also hurt his knee in Chicago, so he missed some time on the DL. I don't think he did get DL. He just uh, yeah, he sat out he five just games. He didn't play, and well, yeah, you kind of like the fact he just drove it. Not only did he, you know he drove it to the opposite field. Yeah, it's kind of annoying if you're pitching to hit a quality pitch the other way for a double or a single. Joey Rickard off the end of the bat. That's playable for Brinson. Trumbo has to hold and two men down. Well, we are calling all tweeters, Snapchatters, and Instagrammers. Join us for our first Birdland social event. It'll be Tuesday, June 26th, prior to the 7:05 game against Seattle. Now, special tickle packages uh, to the exclusive pregame party on the center field roof deck include a Richard Blyer emoji T-shirt plus a Q&A with the Orioles pitcher. So, for your tickets, just go online Orioles.com/slash/BirdlandSocial. Here's Austin wins. Runner at second and two down. Yeah, so he base hit, fastball in, served it into right field. Right there, didn't even move on the changeup. And again, if you're not trying to do so much, not trying to overswing, it's a lot easier to wait on the off speed pitches. Yeah. And if you're not looking there, that's a pretty good slider from Wei and Chen. But it's only strike one. I always felt he, you know, it, it, you, you know, you look at who's in trouble right here. I mean, he's given up a lot more runs than he usually does. Hasn't pitched as well. ZRA is over six run a game. So 
There's a nice little pitch. We haven't seen the curveball very often. So he gets a hit the first time on a fastball. Information pitch the first time, and now he goes the sliders and, and curveballs. Chen has not yet struck out a batter. He's walked only one. It's one and two on wins. Look out, Bobby. Yeah. Well, now all things change because of the two strike count. You can't take the borderline pitch. You know, ideally, if you're weighing Chen, you want Austin wins to swing at something out of the zone that appears to be a strike, and you can do it in this count, and then ends up being a ball. And he goes, "Well, I can't take anything close because I don't want to get called out with a chance to, to get the third run out at second base, drive it in." Chopper to third. There's Rivera. Wins retired, and that'll do it. So one out, double a man left through four, four to two Marlins. There's no better time to act than today. PNC make today the day in Cedric Mullins. Yeah, well, he's on his way and, uh, you know, started at Bowie last year, had a good year. It was kind of uh, hampered by the hamstring problem. So switch hitting outfielder uh, again. And, uh, you know, he's, he, he's got the ability to turn the game around both offensively, especially defensively. Some spectacular plays. Take a look at June 9th. He, he moves from Bowie to Triple A Norfolk. And again, I mean, big swing right here, and here he comes. So this is kind of what you saw when he got to play in the outfield in Sarasota in spring training. You know, the fact to uh, impact the game with his defense. But then again, as a switch hitter, probably more power from the left side. And the reason he goes from double A AA to triple A because he earned it. And then the other thing, you'll see a little bit more accelerated pitching. There's a chopper towards the middle. Manny near the bag, and he can't make a play. The Rivera will reach, leading off in the fifth. Yeah. Yadiel uh, Herrera runs pretty well, and I don't think even if he makes that play. Well, again, just a high chopper, good pitch, bad result. Got to play the short hop because you know who's running. And there is that short hop. So again, you play third, the ball gets to you quicker. You go to shortstop. You have to kind of hurry a little bit. It changes the uh, the in internal clock that you have to have. Two different, entirely different positions. Infield hit for Rivera. Here's Dietrich again. Runner goes. Ball hit the scope. He'll go to Manny out there. Back to first. And a double play. And nicely turned. Well, Alex Scott needed a break. You know, you're coming in at two and eight with an ERA over seven run in a game, and this ball is hit right on the money. So right here and again if it's anywhere other than its scope might have been a base hit but you get your four to six to three on one pitch and it's a bullet but on one hop and then of course scope gets it to Manny quickly enough so he can clear the runner you can see Rivera gets down there I mean his whole intention is to try to break up the double play just couldn't get there quickly enough to do that quick feed by scope and quicker feet for Machado Here's Brian Anderson. 
Anderson now among the league leaders he came in 10th in batting in the National League at 307 and fourth in base hits. He has yeah. more hits than any rookie in the National League. 81. Well he's got what second in base on balls second in doubles for rookies 34 RBI is that second. Four assists in the outfield. And then of course number one in hits. Runs 39 24 I had him at 28 multi hits I don't we'll probably get to that but it's only 24. 24. There's a strike at the knees. Good well, you, you know, live. you trade uh, Giancarlo uh, Stan with his 59 home runs and his MVP trophy to the Yankees. You get rid of 29 and a half million dollar payroll. Now, if you're the Marlins, you need to do that. So you give a guy like Brian Anderson, who had a terrific year at AAA New Orleans, a chance. A nice little breaking ball there. Cobb's got to get over, and he does. But you give him a chance to play, and, and he's doing a nice job of it. So a six pitch inning, our Ram do ups as we go to the fifth. Top of the lineup, Gentry, Jones, and Machado. Park and on Saturday June 30th the fan favorite returns first 35,000 fans 15 and over received the Birdland Hawaiian t-shirt 2018 version so come on out and join us Orioles.com for your tickets and there it is Jim there's the one you were talking about well there's there are some other versions yeah there, there you go nicely going with a floppy hat and sunglasses and of course the Angels will be here Mike Trout What's the how you know you're a New Jersey guy how, how many they, they would they always say how many exactly how many miles Mike Trout grew up from from Camden Yards it's in the notes has to be farther than 87 miles. Yeah that's a New Jersey thing because they uh, they always ask you what exit you live at then they, well, they can course. gauge it. Exit nine. Well turnpike or parkway. Yeah. Well uh, I'm a turnpike guy. Okay. Well I, I was exit 11. On the turnpike or the park. Uh, the turnpike. Parkway was exit 117. Now Mike is from Millersville, which is South Jersey near Philly, so he would be probably. So it probably is I'm 87 saying, miles. Uh, I'm saying yeah. on the turnpike, he's probably exit two. Yeah, 87 miles. I think because when you look at their notes, they always tell you exactly to the mile. Maybe they give him mileage. You know, maybe he stays well, at home and drives down. The Delaware Bridge is what 70 miles from here, and then you cross the river. So yeah, I think you're probably accurate with that. Ground ball to third. Rivera to his left. Real strong arm. Now the Orioles uh, come in at 19 and 49, so on the verge of 50 losses. And here's the earliest uh, that a team has ever reached 50 losses. Uh, the 1982 Twins hold the record June 15th. And the Orioles, uh, 1988 club, June 20th, and the 2010 club, June 20th. And then the all time leaders, the Mets. 
40 and 120 in their expansion year in 1962. Orioles are 19 and 49. Yeah, I guess when you're, you know, 80 games under 500, you don't care about making up those rainouts. They didn't play 162. They didn't play 162. Casey Stengel was the skipper. So there's a message there. You know, we talked about did Scott Cool by the Oriole hitting his instructor forget how to teach hitting and after they went from six runs a game in August to three in September. Did Casey Stengel forget, forget, how, to forget how to manage after managing uh, what the Yankees five, five in a row. consecutive world championships. Now he had the Mets. Yeah, 1949 through 1953. Yeah, Hank Bauer played on those teams my first manager with the Orioles. There you go Adam Adam Jones. Now he has the team lead in multi hit games. There's number 22. He passes Manny. And he is on with a one out single. No, I don't think Don Mattingly knows that uh, again this is when Sen starts to struggle. Goes up to 522 the third time through the order. But it's a slider. It's not quite as sharp. Loses a little bit of velocity. And uh, Rivera can't catch it. Well, here's Manny had the big hit for the O's in the third. Two out two run single to get the Orioles on the board. Cut the Marlins lead in half. Yeah, you didn't, I mean, he was four nothing at the time. He had first base open, two outs. You had Valencia who wears out lefties on deck. So you know he didn't want to purposely got behind him two and zero, oh, and then he would get the base hit. Oh, he just yeah. got under. Yeah, well, he swung at a ball, and there's Shuck, and he's yeah. got it for the yeah. out and two down. So a little over anxious, you know. You bring that ball down about four inches. It's probably a, for Manny that would have been a home run number 19. Just missed it. Chen wants a new baseball. Would you have uh, enjoyed that in your era? Every pitch they give you a new baseball? Or did you like them scuffed up? No, I no. That was Don Sutton. Don, Don <laughs> Sutton liked the scuffle. Who we're gonna no. see next week. I, of course. That's why I said it. Well, he erased Lee Mc, most of Lee McPhail's name in that last game of 82. It probably wouldn't have mattered because he pitched well and I didn't. But, but no, yeah, no. They used to, you know, you make the third out, they roll the ball out there. You yeah. take your warm-up pitches, and you'd still use the same ball. Well, the revenue in baseball wasn't as great back then. I mean, there are legendary stories of catchers using the. Clips on their shin guards to help. Their well, it wasn't them. only that. I mean, you know, the late Mike Flanagan used to the little grommets where the rawhide goes into a glove. It used to. They're now um, a kind of nylon, you know, kind of plastic nylon type of thing. They used to be metal. So all you had to do is rough them up. Just take the ball, scuff it. If you hold a two seam fastball, it scuffs. It. If you're right handed, it scuffs on the left side. It's going to go left to right. If it's on the right side, it's going to dive left. And there's no spin. So that's why the scuff ball. Valencia deep short played there by Riddle and they get the force on Jones nicely done by Riddle and Starlin Castro birds go down in the fifth four to two Miami.
is Meredith Smitty Smith. He's an original board member of the Holistic Life Foundation. Smitty is a Baltimore City basketball coach of 27 years and has supported the mission of HLF since its inception by volunteering as a physical education teacher and a mentor. Uh, earlier today, they led a group of 150 students in an on-field yoga session right here at Oriole Park. On behalf of Smitty, the Orioles Charitable Foundation will donate $2,500 to the Holistic Life Foundation. And if you'd like to donate to any of our hero programs, just go online, orioles.com slash heroes. So today is the yoga session with the Holistic Life folks after the game. The Hall of Famer, you're I gonna, think, you're is going to head down. Yeah. Stretching, major part of our lives, Jim. Here's Ray Amuto, his two run home run, the difference in this 4 to 2 game. Made it 4 0 at the time. He has three of the four RBIs RBI single in the first and a two run home run in the third. Check swing, they wanted to peel, he didn't go. Alex Cobb trying to win his third and this will have to come back for him. He has fared very well in his career against Miami. Remember Tampa Bay and Miami they're the natural rivals rivals so they play every year in the interleague as the Orioles and the Nats do. Ooh. Center field by Jason sound. Jones. Way out there near the wall, and that ball carries out. It's onto the sod farm. Rayamuto, his second home run of the game. He has four RBIs, and it's five to two Miami. Well, we go back to what Michael Hill, the, really the president of baseball operations, saying backspin in the ball. You can see this one goes a little bit farther by a couple of feet, but they're both pretty much right down the middle. And the count, three and one. You want to throw a strike. You can see the target. And I mean, really, 92. But again, he's looking fast. Ball gets it, and all of a sudden, four to two becomes five to two. See how the foot got down? Let the ball travel, and there's that uh, uppercut swing they keep talking about to get the ball in the air. Strike one to Justin Bohr. Hit 17 of them last year. So it's a nice little uh, combo you can catch, and you can hit. And you could hit with power and average, which is why you said that when they traded, they made the four deals. You know, he said, "What about me? Yeah, what about me? <laughs> Can I be number five? Lucky number five? But it certainly has an effect his performance. No. But again, you know, you know, you know, I got Freddie Gonzalez, you know, your third base coach. He man, he's been in baseball forever with Bobby Cox, managed Atlanta. I mean, you know, Mattingly, one of the great hitters of all time. Perry Perry Hill usually. Over at first, he's your infield guy. He's been around forever. They got a nice coaching staff in the sense that they, uh, if you're going to be a young player, they're going to help you get to where you want to go as a player. You know, Mike uh, Pagliarulo, he actually played for the Orioles. He was a former Yankee teammate of Don Manley, the manager. Actually hit 320 when he was playing for the Orioles. Limited at bats. It's interesting that Freddie Gonzalez joined Don Mattingly because Freddie at one time was the Marlins manager but he was oh, fired by the prior ownership but he loves baseball so you know Moore's going to go down on a nice little curveball I mean I had a chance to talk to him at, at length today a oh, good hook first strike out on a curveball this is what they're looking at right here how far the bat travel you can see way out in front of home plate. Sixth strikeout, one down. Ground ball to Scope. Off the bat of Castro. And two away in the Miami sixth inning. The Orioles are proud to join Johns Hopkins, the University of Maryland, and other corporate leaders to support Baltimore City's Youth Works program, which seeks to provide as many as 12,000 Baltimore City youth with summer employment. To donate, visit BaltimoreCityFoundation.org and choose Mayor's Office of Employment Development Youth Works. And to learn more, visit youthworks.oedworks.com. 
JT Riddle. On speed pitch for a strike. Yeah, third time up for JT, double off the top of the wall and then right to the base of the wall on the next one. Both high fastballs. So what does he do? Drops the hook on. Probably be a splitter down and away. Yep, but missed. Kind of know and almost a hit. Of course, a hitter can always guess until they get the two strikes. You can almost see the sequences or what they should throw, and it's just a matter of what kind of quality pitch you can make. And there's another good splitter. And it doesn't mean he can't hit the split finger fastball. It's, it's just again, he's not going to hit it down in the way, and you already know what he can do with a fastball because he's built the two that you've thrown. See that one he pulled across the plate. So if that comes up six inches, might have hit it hard. Yeah, it's funny, he doesn't really break when you look at the Alex Cobb getting to look trying to get the mechanics down. He breaks his hands and he carries them high. So again, the timing of where the foot's going down. I mean, they're way up there. And so again, when he throws for the inside corner, he said, I just I haven't been able to find the lanes to stay out of the middle of the plate. And we've seen that today. I mean, that's what today's about. Not horrible stuff. It's just the command. Too many strikes in the hitting zone. Uh, pitch count, I mean, very efficient. I mean, 74 pitches. The unfortunate thing is. Uh, Real Muto with the two home runs. That's, those are three RBIs right there. And on the seventh pitch, he loses him. There's a two out walk. So Riddle on at first. He's been on base twice today. Cobb is five and three in his career as David Hess who was sent to the bullpen for just today and if he didn't get in the game he was going to do a bullpen after looks like he may get in because of the two days off the rotation is a little bit scrambled plus Andrew Kashner is hoping to come back next week he has a, a bullpen session scheduled for tomorrow and I did see Andrew out here today with Brian Ebel uh, they were checking the back and he was doing some sprints. Make sure everything's okay. There's a bouncer right to Valencia. And he'll get it to first. Brinson retired, and that'll do it. Mid six, five to two, Miami. Out on top early. Uh, already a couple of single runs, first and second. Uh, JT Real Muto uh, with his eighth home run, and then uh, the Orioles coming back in the third. Adam Jones with a double. That'll almost score. They stop him, and then Manny Machado with uh, two outs, single to right field. As the Orioles get back four to two, and then uh, JT Real Muto with his 
second home run three RBI's on the afternoon five to two those are your Geico highlights 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance but visit Geico.com to see how much you could save strike one to Trey Mancini leading off at the Orioles six scope and Trumbo follow Trey has grounded out twice. Yeah, such a humbling game and you can see again the uh, velocity's come down a little bit for Wei and Chen trying to get through the sixth inning now with a three run lead. Tried to time it out in front. So four for 47 with runners in scoring position for Trey and you know how frustrating it is. Last year on the way to hitting 340 in his first year in the big leagues he was 36 for 106. Strike three called. And then you know slider in change up down and away getting into the twilight part of the uh, afternoons here four o'clock games it always gets tough to, to to hit somewhere around 530 to six o'clock Sunfield first and second baseman right fielder but you can see change up right on the corner. So ever since Juan Nieves went out there and after the single by Machado and told Chen hey how about mixing up some breaking balls whether slider change up or curve balls he settled down. One to know on scope Jonathan has walked and lined out the center. Yeah I remember when Scotty McGregor was up as the bullpen coach he was instrumental to try to get him to slow down the bats of the hitters. You know he's always had again that kind of quick release and uh, you know, a lot of guys couldn't time it ball would jump on you out of his hand. But it's nice to get some of those easy outs on the outside corner if you're a lefty turn it over a little bit like that throw it there and then change up in the same proximity. I remember when Scotty worked with Wade Miley when Miley was having all kinds of problems and Scotty told him one day during batting practice try easier. That's it. Slow it down. Try yeah, well. Stay over the pitching rubber. Yeah. Oh. That ball is crushed way back <laughs> for Scope, and that ball is gone. Jonathan Scope gets the crowd back into it. It's a five to three game. Well, Rayo Malto hit his second home run on a three-one fastball. Ditto right here. You know, you got a five to two lead. Well, it's now five to three because you threw a fastball in the middle of the plate. So there you go, seventh home run of the season. Really scuffing. That ball was uh, hit nicely to left field, right off the bat. The sound lets you know. And another $500 for our Maryland Lottery contestant of the game, Abraham Merlos of Hyattsville, courtesy of Jonathan Scope. So maybe that'll get him on a tear. Well, you take a look right here, and you know you want to throw a strike, and it's just down the middle. And and I love this angle. I mean, you can just see slight uppercut. Good. I mean, the, the key, of course, it's hittable. Castro, the second baseman, takes charge to get that ball off the end of the bat. Yeah, so, yeah, so the two down. Sun does come into play here. Well, take a look. Load, foot down. Wait, is your head behind the ball? You're trying to hit the back of it? Boy, really stayed still there. Well, when Jones, Machado, and Scope are hitting at the same time, good things tend to happen. Adam has two hits today. Manny has a big two run single, and now Scope a home run. Here's Joey Rickard, who continues to struggle. No, they take the bun away. Well, he's hitting fly balls. You know, hit the home run the other day, and that's wonderful. But if you tell me that Joey Rickard wants to come in with what 25 balls in the air and 21 on the ground, it's not the ratio you want. I mean, it's great to hit home runs, but he's got to hit line drives and hit, hit the ball hard on the ground. Yeah, when you get into the certain counts, that's fine. You see, almost uh, two to one is. Well, he's just two for his last 32 in his yeah. last 10 games. Well, again, you like to take, you like to hope your young players, you know, you know, what, three years ago, a Rule 5 player out of Tampa's organization that when you do get a chance to play, 
whatever the reason is you get a chance to do well and you know he's been up and down enough where you know, I think he's got a pretty good read. Orioles also have a read on him very good defensive player. But to stay at this level and play consistently he has to hit. And Chen gets him. And that'll do it. Uh, Jonathan Scope pulls the Orioles back within two runs. Number seven for Scope, a no doubt about it shot, a home run to left field. Tomorrow, as the Orioles and Marlins wrap up the three game series, Dylan Bundy will be on the mound. He'll go against rookie Trevor Richards. Our coverage on Masson 2 begins at 12 30 with those extra presented by Southwest, and then game coverage at 1 o'clock. We've got all the access you need right here on Masson. Well, the center field roof deck is popular today. Oh, it's a beauty, as you mentioned, uh, you know, yesterday, as you had a, a commerce chamber, chamber of, of commerce night, and today, same set for the day. There's Jonathan Scope doing a little T work before the game, and then he teed off on a home run. So, you know, so if you're Alex Cobb right here, Orioles look like they have a, you know, a little bit of action going in their bullpen because you you were down four nothing. You crawled here in the uh, top of the seventh within two. And I don't think you're going to Buck Scholar will linger very long because you got a chance to win this game. And you want to do it before Kyle uh, Bearclaw come, comes in, who's only given up one hit in his last eight and two thirds innings, 15 and two thirds scoreless, and immediately you go three and zero. Oh. Tyron Guerrero, who throws about his average fastball is about 97, and then Michael Gibbons for the Orioles. With Millsy watching. So Jonathan goes deep. Orioles first home run in 31 innings. Since Tuesday night when Joey Rickard. Hit a home run off Eduardo Rodriguez the home run that Jim talked about. The other thing about the home run this is possibly playable for Valencia. And it is and he's got it for the out. The one down on the pop up by Shuck. The Orioles Jim. Now have 18 consecutive solo home runs. Yeah, the so last home run with a man on base, Pedro Alvarez at Fenway, May 19th, a two run shot off Rick Porcello. Now, going back to 1974, the most hit in a row solo, San Francisco Giants, 21 in a row back in 2011. They also did it, the Giants, 19 in a row solos, 2017. The Orioles are now at 18 straight solo home runs. Cobb is back within two. He's looking for that shutdown inning as he works here in the seventh. Well, they get to see him now for the uh, what the third time, and then he'll be into the uh, fourth time through the order. You don't, a lot of times you don't see many pitchers. Uh, the, the amount of at bats for the average major league starter, with a couple of exceptions. I mean, you know, this 
except for the Scherzer of the world and all that you just don't see. You know sometimes even the third time because that's a lot of the ball clubs hey when you get into the third time you're you're going to the bullpen. You know I was looking at uh, Pomerantz who won 17 games for the Red Sox I think he got seven outs after the sixth inning last year a whole year and winning 17 games it kind of tells you how where the bullpen that's not any criticism it's just the way the games evolve for some ball clubs the ones that really good bullpens and so many teams now are going to an eight man pen and a three man bench to be able to spread the workload out but they have nine now or yeah, they have nine out yeah, there it's hard, nine. hard to fit them on the scorecard but if anybody and only can one do left it, you can Bouncer to Manny comes in to play the hop and fires to get the hustling Rivera and two men down. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Orioles and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. There's a young man yeah. having fun between innings. Is he ever? That was the fan you left tickets for, I think. Uh, yeah. We're going out dancing afterwards. I need a little rhythm. There you go. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Well, wait, no. First, you have to do the yoga. Well, th I'm doing that. That'll loosen me up. And then, because <laughs> I have a tendency sometimes to feel like uh, Steve Martin. And when he, remember the movie and the jerk? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, he couldn't dance. Just missed wow. inside two and yeah. one on Dietrich. Not by much. Yeah, it's amazing when uh, you're struggling a little bit and you know, not getting a lot of run support. Actually, this is more runs than they, they have gotten, at least average for Cobb. All year long, but it's only like four pitches. That's all it takes sometimes. And there's a good splitter and a fastball count. So he gets back to three and two. I mean, you go to Dietrich, let it off with a fastball in the middle of the plate for a double. You know, then Riddle got a high fastball double home run right down the middle to Ramolto. Same with the other one. So, I mean, it's like four or five pitches. And if they hit him out of the ballpark, that can make a huge difference. Line drive will fall in front of. Craig Gentry for a base hit. So Dietrich has a two hit game. Boy, he is some kind of a tear. He is 20 for his last 54. Well, 360, and that gives you an idea. I mean, if you hit 300, you're 3 out of 10. 360 since May 31st. And this ball club as a whole, I mean, they're, they're almost, a, what, about a third of a run better when they get out of Miami because it's a pitcher's ballpark when they get on the road. Now, it doesn't translate into a lot of wins. They're 13 and 22 coming in, and 14 and 21 at home but but they have won four of their last five games and that's it's so simple in this game it, you know you always talk about turning the lineup over or continuing the process that two out base hit gets Anderson to the plate and while he doesn't hit a lot of home runs Dietrich has enough Dietrich has enough you know enough speed if you hit a double the chance to score from first. Stop keeping them close. Austin wins in his brief time in the big leagues. He has caught all three potential base stealers. He is perfect so far. Against Cobb, there have been three steals and three caught stealers. So six attempts against Alex. Ooh. Nearly hit his knee. Yep. Not particularly a big lead. There's a chopper. Valencia has to charge. Plenty of time. High throw, but Mancini's there for the out. So base hit, and a man left. Seventh inning stretch at Camden Yards. Five to three, Miami.
to you by Ocean City. There's no end to the fun you'll have in Ocean City. Plan your trip today at OCOcean.com. And by Royal Farms, pick up your Rofo rewards card today at any Royal Farms to save on gas and to start earning points for free stuff. Details in store. A lovely day here at the ballpark. Nice crowd on hand and welcome into our booth. Jim and Jim on this Saturday afternoon and uh, Jim has his Orioles Father's Day necktie that will be handed out tomorrow. First uh, 20,000 fans 18 go. and over as we celebrate Father's Day. That is a good looking tie. Let me see the knot. You know Rick Dempsey will be <laughs> certainly critiquing it. So the Oriole bats uh, coming alive a little bit in this game. Good to see a home run. Yeah the uh, home runs by uh, JT Rio Molto that's it kind of does him in but you know scope gets off the snide a little bit with his home home run. Uh, but certainly a chance as they're going to go to their bullpen uh, to get back in the game. So again they've lost what uh, 10 in a row here at home. Eight consecutive losses anyway. Good afternoon. Chen pitch well. And so did uh, Alex Cobb. We'll see. I don't know if he'll come back out but he gave him a chance to win in the so he pitched late into the ball game so he saved the bullpen. Now they just need some offense something that's been a problem. Yeah, the Orioles are trailing five to three but they're is the numbers on Chen. They have chased Chen after six innings. So he allows eight hits, three earned runs, one walk, a couple of strikeouts, and 94 pitches to get through those six innings. And take a look uh, as we look at Guerrero's going to come in, hard throwing right hander, and uh, the Jiffy Lube pitching change. A regular oil changes at Jiffy Lube will help your engines. Run cleaner and a longer Jiffy Lube drive in today. So uh, Tehran Guerrero again really good stuff hard thrower I mean fastball can get just a little bit under ninety nine hard slider to go with it throws about sixty five percent fastballs and why not it's got a big big arm and there is the heater at ninety eight and it's easy. Austin wins leading off the number nine batter and then back to the top of the lineup for Gentry and Jones do. One thing about the Marlins and the construction of their bullpen uh, even though they have nine arms out there there's only one lefty Adam Conley so if Buck Showalter goes to his bench for a lefty there's only one lefty to counter that. It's Juan Nieves the pitching coach. Yeah, actually was traded uh, to Miami with Andrew Castor from San Diego back in uh, 2016 there's a hanging slider. That becomes hittable when you throw 100 because it speeds the bat up. Well, last year, I mean, he was started at uh, Jupiter, their Class A affiliate. Then he went to Jacksonville for 17 games and then ended up at Triple A. Wins one out of two. He's the one thing he did through the minors is almost walk one per inning. And there's the backup slider. You think it's going to break and it doesn't. So he gets away with it. But again at 80, 98 to 100 and you're trying to react and it just can't stay on top of it. It backs up the old uh, backup slider it can be a very effective pitch even though you don't do it on purpose. The one down on the strikeout. Herrera with a big arm there's Chen. It's his game the win it would be his second. His only win was against Colorado on April 28th. Chen had gone 0 3 in his last eight starts with an ERA approaching seven. Well, Lorena had only won one, one, one time. You know, pitching longer in game till last night. There's Jose on the bench after his workout today. They do a nice job here for the visiting team. They have a room across from the visiting clubhouse, a workout room with weights and all the well, yeah, gear that's you know, needed. I mean, it is Camden Yards, and they have done remodeling. And you know, even some of the older clubs, at the, you know, clubhouses or ballparks like Fenway, have made it a little bit nicer. But it is very convenient, right across the hallway. Yeah, so, you know, the one thing, he's got a really good arm, and he's going to, you know, possibly help you out with some base on balls and. You know, coming in 30 innings a hit per inning and uh, 18 walks so that's 49 base runners and only 30 in a third innings and that's how your ERA can get up over five runs a game and gets the high strike there. 
Guerrero's 27. He's from Colombia. One of the many rookies on this active roster. Late on the swing. Gentry one out of three. He singled on the first pitch he saw leading off in the first inning. This way towards Jim. Yeah, we're trying to watch the monitor, and when the ball is fouled straight back, that's you immediately get into the uh, the dive position. You wouldn't dive. Oh yeah, I would. <laughs> well, you know the ball. I mean, it's comes back with spin and all that. It doesn't matter if you want any gold gloves. You're trying to get out of the way. Strike yeah. three called on what Gentry thought was ball four. Yeah, really, right around the knees. Could have gone either way. Marlins get it. And again, we've talked about CB uh, Buckner. He's been very consistent. Is it low? Yeah. Just watch the catcher's glove. Watch it. Yep. Anytime you bring it up, you know, it's a borderline pitch. And again, I mean, that ball, yeah, just under the kneecaps. Wow, he brought that up a foot. Yep. Like we talked about, when you get to this time of the day on these used to be 430 starts, uh, it's hard to see whether you're hitting or you're umpiring. That's a nice slider. Where'd that come from? I mean, he has it, but that was like perfectly <laughs> thrown. I think Adam Jones is asking the same thing. <laughs> well, it's hard enough that he's already hit 100. I mean, but then he drops off a 91 mile per hour slider at your kneecaps. And then almost gets you with 101. You know, whenever time I see somebody that throws like this, I, I you know, they, I remember, you know, the famed Steve Dalkowski, a little left-hander, who always struck over 200, but always walked more than he struck out coming up through the minor leagues for the Orioles. And when he finally made the ball club, the the Pirates were in Miami and. Danny Murtaugh said boys get as far away from home plate. I don't want anybody hurt because they were about a couple of days away from starting the season and that's the kind of arm. Steve Dalkowski had you know threw it through the backstop knocked a little bit of a guy's ear off. That's wow. how hard he threw. So when you throw one hundred and one miles per hour in the twilight. Right center field on the run is Brinson and a diving try but it's off the glove and Adam Jones is on. They went a long way for it. Didn't hit it particularly hard. If it hangs a little bit more, he probably catches it. You can see him in your screen. And then right here, he's kind of circling it and just maybe touch one of the rawhide strings on his glove. Couldn't lay leather on it. Backed up nicely by Brian Anderson. So for Adam Jones, his 11th three-hit game this year. Well, you also get Manny with the tying run at the plate. And uh, Ball one let's get a look at our four drive of the game here's Manny back in the third inning. Well you're down four to nothing and then they pitch to him. Uh, two one fastball slices it in the right field. And uh, here come the two runs. Uh, Jonesy and Austin wins scored the first run. Hurry to your local Ford dealers for great savings on cars trucks and SUVs. The two and oh on Machado. So a young reliever and uh, you know growing pains. As we mentioned, did pitch briefly one game for the Padres back in 2016, two inches, two innings, and the rest of it was all double A A ball. Worked his way right up to the big leagues this year. 
And Machado has another hit the opposite way. Practice does pay off. Well, it's also it's practice, but it's also your approach. You know, Manny would love to hit another home run that would have tied it up. But again, I mean, that's inside out. Stay inside. I mean, great angle right here. Watch how the bat head comes through the zone. So again, I mean, it's almost like uh, you started the runner. You're trying to hit and run, hit it right to second base. Nobody plays there. But again, uh, I think what happens is that you like to hit home runs. You've hit them in the past. But unless you're willing to maybe slow the swing down, as we look at Brad Zieg Ziegler, the veteran sinker baller out in their bullpen. Juan Nieves out for another chat. So the first two hitters struck out wins on a swing Gentry on a borderline called strike three that he thought was ball four. Well you mentioned all the righties out there I mean the Orioles do have you got Alvarez on the, uh, the bench you got Chris Davis on the bench. Well, you do have some options not that you're going to pinch hit for Valencia because he's been swinging the bat real well. But Danny represents the go ahead run. Ball one low. So he went away from the fastball, the first pitch following the pitch. Well, the you're, pitch. when you throw 99 to 101, you're hitting, you're hitting, you're hitting the fastball, you're hitting off that, and you hope that he. As we look at the shadows here at Camden Yards, but you're hitting, you're hoping he hangs it and speeds up your bat with a slider. And I mean, you're looking for that pitch right there. Because he just doesn't really throw that many sliders. You can hit the slider looking for the fastball. You can't hit the fastball looking for the slider. Your bat will never catch up. Guerrero is 6'8, 210. Overthrows that pitch. Nice block yeah. there by Rayamuto. Well, working prospect. Prospect. We talked about how well he throws. I mean, right there, and he's just trying to catch it and able to backhand it right into the weapon. And two and one on Valencia. Guerrero, first two outs, somewhat easily, and now back-to-back -back hits. And there's a hundred. Yeah, I think he's got the hundred mile per hour strike zone where it, if he can throw it that hard, it doesn't really matter. He's just trying to get it somewhere in the rec, you know, the strike zone rectangle, and take his chances. Jones and Machado, second and first, with two down. And a line drive face hit to right field. Valencia delivers. Here's Jones to score. Machado to third. And it's a one run game. Big two out rally here for the Birds. Now we talked about their bullpen over five runs a game. And again, how, what's your approach? Young pitcher, he throws 100. Slider, you take it because you're not looking for it. There's a fastball. There's one that bounces, two and one. Right there. Now you've already you timed him a little bit, and then it's a ball almost in the same spot. Flares it into right field. So three consecutive singles, and that's uh, it not get the Orioles on the board. They only trail five to four as Machado goes all the way to third. And that's going to get Don Mattingly to the mound to make a pitching change. We go to Ziegler, the sinker baller. Well, it's a five-four game. Manny at third represents the tying run. Valencia the go-ahead run with two down.
And of course Guerrero not happy with four consecutive base hits. But they still have the lead as Brad Ziegler the veteran will come in I mean he's been in the big leagues now this is his 10th year. So a sinker baller not having a great year last year. In his first year with Miami he'd been with Arizona Oakland that's when we first saw him and then uh, of course last year one in four. But again uh, the third best ground ball ratio so. If he's going to be success he's not going to throw it by you. He's going to try to get you to hit it on the ground. There's the tying run Manny Machado at third go ahead run Valencia at first. Here's Mancini. Fouls back the breaking ball Mancini has never faced Brad Ziegler. Trey is 0 for 3. And now just 2 for 19 on the homestand he is due. Yeah curveball sliders around 73 fastball usually tops out again trying to sink it in mid mid 80s 85 or so. There's another breaking ball and it's a good one 73 miles per hour. He also has a change up doesn't throw that as often. So he's closed. He's been a setup guy. A couple of years ago what 32 saves for Arizona 15 next year came back with 20. Yep. They appeal he didn't go. Well this is where you really I mean you got to stay back you got to sit on the breaking ball and you got to trust your hands something that when you're struggling is hard to do. Because he's trying to get it you could see him get out on his front foot because that's what the change of speed does. So, well just again I mean you just flick it with you know get him with the bat head. Well, that's a good take right there. And because we've seen and what what was so special about Trey Mancini in 2017 you could throw the ball in on him and he would just react with the bat head because always kind of knew where it is and he's he's lost that feeling. You know, could it be the knee could it be the fact that he's maybe pressing a little bit could it be all those things. Yeah, not even close. So the last two there I mean those are those meaningless pitches if you're Brad Ziegler. And it gives the Orioles an advantage here because three and two Valencia will be off with the pitch so if a ball finds the gap he might be able to score. From first. Well not only that it's also I mean what if the ball is hitting the hole instead of uh, having a force play you don't you lose it. Fights it off yeah. to stay alive. Well, again I mean you're just trying to make contact here if you're Trey Mancini. You're due. You're, you're due to hit a flare somewhere. Find a hole. But the only way you can do that is if you make contact. And Machado at third, Valencia at first, a run in. It's 5 4 Miami. I mean, really deep in left field. So a lot of room to, if you can get one over the shortstop head, ball's going to fall. You know, a, little, a little different, Brian Anderson in right field. Towards the middle. Middle has it. And he gets Mancini at first. So Trey got the ground ball, but Riddle able to get to it. And that ends the threat. So the Orioles get one, they strand two. And through seven, we now have a one run game. Nice job there by Riddle, the shortstop, to get Mancini for the final out.
trying to get back on the win column. That's not going to happen as he's going to leave uh, trailing five to four. But again, he made a lot of good pitches and uh, maybe really four or five where he probably didn't want them. A little home runs to their catcher. Rail Molto and then a couple other pitches. So he pitches well. He goes seven innings. Uh, and again, six strikeouts, a lot of them early. Very efficient with the pitches, only 96 pitches. And he'll give away to Michael Gibbons. So his numbers have inflated a little bit. The one that uh, really kind of surprises you, the uh, batting average on balls in play. It's about 90 points higher than it was last year at uh, 345, which is about 45 points higher than the league average. But again, a strikeout a pitcher. And coming off a nice performance against the Red Sox. An inning. Again, 93 to 98, slider and a changeup. He's allowed five earned runs in his last six appearances, but as Jim mentioned, his last one was scoreless. Rayamuto off the end of the bat to Jones. One down in the eighth. Now it's time for our Lowe's whole team together. We'll hear the bullpen ERAs here at Camden Yards and Miguel Castro who's been on some kind of a tear. 1.45 at Camden Yards. Gibbons allowed two runs to Boston on Monday so that helped inflate that to 378. Justin Bohr now, 1 0. Yeah, but Michael's only given up, what, 17 runs, but, you know, a three spot in April, three spot in May, and then a two spot. So, again, when you're used to having such glowing numbers, that that's all it takes is the innings, even though he does pitch a lot of innings, 34 innings coming into it. If you have a three and a three and a two, ERA jumps. Yeah, that happened to Brad Brock when he gave up three runs in that game in Toronto. His ER jumped up. But as you said in the opening, Jim, and I was listening, it's a new day. <laughs> Thank you. It's a new day. I mean, it really is. Every you have to erase the record because it's certainly not if, if for the Orioles what you want it to be. And you got to figure out. Okay, we got to play today. I still remember 1972. Uh, you know, we, we struggled all years long. It was the year that Frank Robinson was traded for Doyle Alexander. And, uh, there is uh, Connie, the only lefty, the lone, the lonely lefty. But Jimmy Fry, who was our first base coach, would go on to manage Kansas City and the Mets, be the GM in Chicago, and uh, see, not the Mets, the the Cubs. He would, uh, he, he he said, you got to lose yourself in that game, and you do, and it's hard to do. Four down on strikes, two away. So it doesn't really matter in this game. Uh, as a professional, what happened yesterday, you have to kind of turn the page. And you know, Michael Gibbons, a world of talent, and we've seen it. I mean, you come in and he started the year. He's 0 3 this year, but he was 18 3. Came to the Orioles as a converted infielder all the way back in 2015 and has done a marvelous job. The vulture. Yep. Well, he wins games, but he also pitches well. If you could only turn back time and go back to Delmarva and see that infield. At third base, Jonathan Scope. At shortstop, Manny Machado. And at second base, Michael Gibbons. And Gibbons will tell you to this day, no ball ever got through. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can see how quick he is. I mean, he's very agile. I mean, he fields his position great. Just did get a piece. So Castro stays alive. Castro, one of the few hitters that has seen Gibbons because of his days with the Yankees. He is four for 11 against Michael. So nothing in two, two outs, nobody on. So is Conley getting loose to keep the lefties on the bench? Although you're not going to pinch hit for scope, you're not going to pinch hit for Trumbo, but Rickard's spot is due third next half inning. A little bit low. The 
There's Pedro. He's ready if needed. Five man bench and they're all lefties. Well Chris Davis is physically able to hit. High fly ball to left. Joey Rickard will circle to it. And he's got it for the out. So Gibbons has a three up three down inning. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Birds down by a run. Miller Lite hold true moment and we go back to the sixth inning Jonathan Scope batting and he absolutely crushes his seventh home run the left field he hit that off way in Chen of the Orioles chip back in it now trailing by a run at 5 4 for Jonathan just his second home run in his last 69 at bats yeah, and all he's trying to do is put a good swing on it but it was about to count. Yeah, Stigler was, stays on. He was kind of lamenting. He said, you know, last year I hit the breaking ball really well. I was one of the best breaking ball hitters in the team. I was this, I was that. I go, yeah, you were. And you can still do it. It's just a matter of getting your timing down and you know, they keep working on it. And then he, we mentioned it last night, you get in a hurry and you want to get it, do it all at once. It's a bat to a bat. You know, you know what Ziggler can do. He's not going to throw it by you. He's going to sink it. We've seen a lot of breaking balls. So you look down. You want him to try to bring the ball up, but you're looking down in the zone. Baltimore chopped to third. There's going to be a tough wow. play for Rivera. Oh, look at that arm. Well, I'm never. Yeah, but how about barehanding uh, uh, that ball? And I guess he he's got pretty good uh, time clock on him because he probably figured the ball's up in the air. Baltimore chop. Look at this. Now you see the the little two three hoppers on the infield, but he barehands it and throws them out. Very easy to drop this ball. Unbelievable play right there, and he does have an arm. Wow. Probably felt the transfer from glove to hand. Even though you would have caught him with your hands together, you wouldn't have given him enough time. Ball one to Trumbo, doubled in the fourth. Well, Mark can hit, you know, he can play golf. That's what he needs to do, golf for him. Look down. He hangs a breaking ball. Got to stay. There is Conley again getting loose. Brad Brock in the O's pen. All three. Well, he probably figures I'm not going to give in to Mark Trumbo, and if I don't give in to him and walk him, I probably won't face the next guy. As they'll pinch hit. There's a four pitch walk with one down, so the tying run is on. Well, this Father's Day, why not give Dad the gift of baseball? With MLB.tv, watch baseball live or on demand on his favorite supported devices. Save 50% now through Father's Day, so don't miss out. Blackout and other restrictions do apply. Visit MLB.tv for all the details. 
So it's obvious that Buck uh, Showalter would rather have Rickard face Ziggler than Alvarez face Conley. And for the moment, he's saving his pinch runner. And the lefties uh, are hitting 158 off of Adam Conley. One and one on Joey, who's 0 for 3. Well, she's probably going to end up after I said you're not going to make your living when you're not a strong guy hitting a two run home run here because you know you just don't want to be hitting in the ball in the, the air if, if, if you're not a home run hitter. Chop foul Bobby Dickerson with those short hands. Well Bobby always says I could field hitting maybe a little challenge. <laughs> so I didn't play in the big leagues. It's here now. Oh, is he ever? Oh, one of the uh, again, one of the great guys that the Orioles have as coaches. Slow ground ball to Castro. He has wow. one play. It's at first that he just does get Rickard. Well, again, by playing it that way, I, you know, if he stays back, he's probably going to get the lead runner. And by trying to do this, number one, look at the short off. That ball easily could have gone underneath him. And right here he goes, why did I do that? But I think right now he figures I'm going to catch it. I'm going to be able to tag him. And he probably turned, he could have turned around and made actually made the, the throw to, to Riddle. Don Mattingly wants to find out if Trumbo went out of the baseline. Didn't appear to. In fact, if anything, it looked like Castro got out of his way by coming in on that ball. Brian O'Nora yeah, explaining right. his point of view. So take a look. So he's right in the baseline, and yeah, I mean, he didn't. He still could have, you know, been able to uh, probably tag the Blake. I mean, right there. So what? That's barely what? Three feet, two feet, two and a half feet. Well, Mattingly obviously doesn't agree. But well, he just—I uh, I think Don. What Don's saying is, we wanted to run the baseline so he could have tagged him and turned the double play. But when he didn't, okay, I went out of the baseline because it's a huge play. Orioles get a base hit here. All of a sudden, you got a, yourself a tie game. Trumbo doesn't run real well, but with two outs, he's going on contact. So a lot of things in your favor. Here's Austin Wins, who's one out of three, singled and scored in the third. There's a strike on the breaking ball. Austin still looking for that first multi hit game. This would be a good spot to get that base hit. One out of three so far. Wow. Throw behind Trumbo. Mm -hmm. That was a pretty good off speed pitch on two. And there was some of the toughest because, uh, again, if you're Mark, I mean, you had some options. You know, you could pinch run with Jace Peterson, you know, maybe Corman Joseph, who came up yesterday. So if you're Mark and you know that again you're not the speediest guy kind of like when somebody bunts through a ball and you're trying to get that extra step a good secondary lead. And then Rio Molto one of the best throwing catchers at least the quickest release of any of the catchers in the National League tries to pick him off. And he gets wins for the final out. So the big breaking ball a one out walk a man left through eight five four Miami.
again, partnering with the Orioles to support Kids Peace, a nonprofit organization that provides much needed mental and behavioral health care for foster youth of Maryland. Today, they presented a check for $10,000 to the Kids Peace organization. The annual Kid Peace Trick or Trot 5K Race One Mile Walk will take place at Oriole Park on Saturday, October 27, 2018. For more information, visit Orioles.com slash Kids Peace. Yeah, they've been doing that for a number of years. So. I saw Angela Showalter down on the field. Oh, Brad Brock coming in. You know, done a nice job. Uh, you know, blown save opening day when the hot hopper, a little grounder got lost in the uh, sun and then went up in Toronto. Other than that, so a chance right here. Just come in, do what you're capable of doing. As Riddle's going to lead it off. And then see what they could do against probably their closer. Kyle Bearclaw in the in the ninth. You know the good news is the top of the order will be up for the Orioles in the bottom of the ninth. Ball towards the yeah. middle. Machado diving play fires and safe is the call at yeah. first. Bang bang. What an effort by Machado. Yeah pretty routine play if you don't fall off for Brad Brock because it wasn't hit that hard. I mean right there right there couldn't quite get it. And then what's the play by Banny. Now, unfortunately Riddle has great speed. So he beats it out uh, but bang bang only because of a fine fine defensive play by M.M. Manny Machado. So an infield hit. Marlins now can play for an insurance run. They're up by one. Here's Lewis Brinson. I don't. I can't imagine if we look at Brinson coming through the minors as a slugger that he really sacrificed very much. So, and if you're Don Mattingly, let's see, he's he had not on the year. Yeah, well, he had one in when he was with the Arizona Rangers back in uh, 2012. None with Milwaukee last year. Sacrifice flies, yeah. So, at least in the minor leagues, four. Yeah, Alex Cora, who's been pushing all the right buttons up in Seattle, tried to use Bradley, Jackie Bradley Jr., to, to bunt, and he struck, ended up popping it up and then striking out. He hadn't done it since 2015. So sometimes you, you know, one of the keys to good managing, yeah, you want to have good players, and then you got to know what they can do and what they can't do. Orioles rarely sacrifice, just not. What they're all about, but Show Walter doesn't like giving up outs to move up a runner. Well, you, you you do it late in the ball game because you only get 27 outs usually in the American League. You're you know DH they don't give outs early. But if I go back until the retirement of JJ Hardy, the best runner on the team was JJ, which you never would have anticipated except that he played the game the right way. He could bunt with the best of them. Gold glove shortstop that hit home runs, but he could sacrifice. And a swing and a miss. He got him. So one down. Yeah, a steady, a steady diet of breaking balls and then 94 on the corner. So we've seen the velocity for Brad Brock and the location. It's a perfect pitch right here. Young hitter, throw it close enough to the corner that he's going to chase, and you could see him reach. And, and uh, you know, the front foot gets down, and that ball right on the corner or off, he just couldn't get to it. Here's J.B. Shuck in the number eight spot today. RBI and a ground out back in the second inning, and that's a big run because right now difference in the game. Two manufactured runs in the first two innings. Orioles in the ninth have Gentry, Jones, and Machado do with five left-handed batters available on the bench against. Bear claw who's getting loose. Yeah, a little change up that misses. You feel the double play depth as you see. There's the runner, JT Riddle. Interesting team. They have two JTs and they have a JB in their starting lineup. The Riddle doesn't run a whole lot coming off of sh shoulder surgery to his left shoulder, his non throwing arm. As a matter of fact, this team in general doesn't 
Cameron Mabin uh, two steals but been caught four times and then you got Brinson three out of three another good change up that he fouls off. Well, it's second rider getting loose. Not bear call. No. Another hard throwing rider actually uh, you, know, you want to rank him in the bullpen probably the sec second most effective. And then mid 90 fastball with a slider and a changeup. There's a double play ball. Scope to Manny. Back to first and safe. Oh, he hustled down yeah. the line. Yeah, well, that's one thing that uh, JT Shuck has always had speed. So, what you think is a double play ball, and you're right about this. I mean, they do everything properly quick release. Manny with a powerful arm, and he's able to get across the bag. Been playing long enough, as you mentioned uh, last year, the whole year at AAA, trying to get back to the big leagues, and he does it with the Marlins. Jack Burdett Chuck. JB. Here's Yadiel Rivera, the number nine batter. Brad Brock's high school coach is here this weekend watching his former player play. It's got to be a thrill, right? Oh, high school coach yeah. to watch. Guy he knew as a teenager in the big leagues. Todd Smith. He's Brad's high school coach. Wins checking with John Russell to see if there's a play on. Perfect pitch. Well, you live for those type of pitchers if you're a pitcher. And, and it's like they said, okay, you get to run it up to home plate and hands of the catcher. Couldn't do a better job than throw that fastball right on the corner. And then Wins just freezes it there for Buckner at the home plate umpire. Now behind Perry Hill, the first base coach. And Rivera said, I better put the emergency half on and cover that outside corner. Brad has back to back scoreless appearances since the blown save in Toronto. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about that. He said, I had nothing. I just could not command the ball. Trying to. Tremendous acquisition by Dan Duquette from San Diego. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he's. For a minor leaguer who's yeah. retired now. Yeah. You know, we talked about how Michael Givens converted from an infielder, but, you know, Brad coming into this season, uh, you know, 26 and 13 for the Orioles, ERA of under two and three quarters runs a game because of the injuries that Britain had to close last year. Actually did a pretty good job. Now was he 47 out of 47 like Zach was? Nobody does it, puts those numbers. But he's proved he could close and be a really good setup man. And down on strikes goes Rivera. The base hit a man left. Here we go to the bottom of the ninth. Birds come to bat down by a run.
Nice Southwest. Low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Little fans on Utah Street, 5-4 game. As we go to the bottom of the ninth, and a new pitcher comes on, and it is not the closer. It's no. Second rider. Oh, second rider, Drew's done a nice job. He's on one of those uh, uh, rolls last 12 games, 11 innings. They have not scored on him, so he's you no know, hard thrower. And again, like we said, uh, mid 90s, slider, change up to go with it. And you can see fly ball pitcher. We'll see if that comes into play. You know, last year uh, down at Triple A most of the year, and then up. Uh, again, out of the bullpen. So 26 games at Triple Eight, 37 with the uh, the Marlins, and then there's strike one right on the outside corner at 95. Corbin Joseph is pinch hitting for Craig Gentry. Made his Orioles debut last night after coming up from Double A Bowie, and he went one for three. Excuse me, one for four. Yeah, a little ground ball single into right field and. You know, hit 336 down there at the double A, eight home runs, so a little bit of pop, 34 runs driven in. And so he gets a report. And, you know, now there's been no shadows. You can see, though, 96, so he goes up a, a mile or two. Second rider out of the University of Tennessee, drafted by Miami in the eighth round back in 2012. He's a native of Atlanta. And right to the bullpen, or excuse me, uh, you know, pretty much uh, got some starts early in his career, and then they fouls that off and into the emergency hack. Total different level here because the guys usually have more velocity in some respects, but they also can command the ball a little bit. And then most of the good guys, they usually have a nice little secondary pitch. And there's the changeup. So he's seen at least two of his three. Starts with getting a runner on. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. You've got Adam Jones already with three hits waiting on deck. That's the Think about Corbin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he battles. He makes contact. Well, don't you think, Jim? And you know, we talked about the fact he what. Got to play with the Yankees and get six at bats back in 2013, and then you go back to the minor leagues. You end up, you know, you kind of have a pretty good idea who you are at this point when you've been playing so often. So you, you know, he's not a home run guy, but he's a guy that can drive the ball if he gets pitches, and all he knows what his job is here is get somehow base. get on base. Eleven seasons in pro ball since he was drafted by the Yankees out of high school in 2008. And then once again, I mean, those are, yeah, those are good pitches. So you just keep fouling them off. You know where the bat head is. If if he, I don't know if he's going to throw a breaking ball three and two when you got a one run lead, but you're hitting again. We're hitting off the fastball because of the velocity. And your hope if he does it, throw a change up or even a, a breaking ball that he'll hang it, speed up the bat. Ninth pitch coming. Yeah. Fouls it off yeah. again. That's the fifth foul ball in this at bat. Well, you can't hit those pitches. The only thing you can do is foul them off, and that's what he's doing. And you know, if this was two and two instead of three and two, they'd probably try to crowd him like he did on the one-two pitch up and in. But you know, the last thing that the second rider wants to do is walk Corbin Joseph here. And, and he, he did. did. Yep. What an at bat. Ten pitches he gets on with a leadoff walk. Well, there's a lesson to be learned for some of these other guys sitting on the bench that are struggling. He cut a swing down. And by doing that, able to stay alive. And uh, but now all of a sudden we talked about pinch running earlier. You got a guy that can steal some bases. Now you got to realize Real Milto is one of the better throwing catchers in the National League. So you got speed and defense. Even Brian Holiday has caught the last nine guys, the backup catcher for the Marlins. Real Milto has caught 10, 14 have made it, but that's a 42% caught stealing Ray for Ray Amuto. Adam Jones now winning run at the plate. Wow. Yeah when you hold the ball that much it's very likely that he's not going to throw and. Well the Orioles don't steal a lot of bases you had Gentry coming in with 10 and then. Jace Peterson eight out of nine.
There have been two caught stealing and four stolen bases with Steckenrider on the mound for the Marlins. Peterson, the pinch runner, the tying run, winning run at the plate. Orioles seeing this young right hander for the first time. Another throw to first, and Peterson back. So at a minimum, Jimmy's dividing the attention. Well, the daddy's doing, and but I think that Bruce Steckenrider, you know, came into the year only what uh, 94 days in the big leagues, but you know, he's been in organized ball since 2012, so he knows how to hold his runners. You know, he's 6'4, so a little bit slower to the plate. Slow ground ball. Uh, Castro tags him out, throws to first, and gets a double play. Well, we'll see. Uh, that may go to the video there. And Buck Showalter already told CB Buckner, the home plate umpire, to hold on. And so again, right here, can you beat it? Can you beat it? Nope. What a nice play by Castro. This time they're able to tag the runner and get Adam Jones out. So right there, he tried to get out of the way. So Castro didn't do it the last time, but did it this time. One pitch, two outs here in the ninth, trailing by one for the Orioles. And that'll get Manny to the plate. Manny with a two for four day. Well, I've been there, maybe not closing, but <laughs> you do not want to tie the game up pitching to Manny Machado. Left center field, long run for Brinson out there. He runs it down and makes the catch, and that's the ball game. Manny hit it well, but Brinson a lot of ground out there. He covers left center field, and the Orioles go down again. They have now lost nine in a row overall and 11 in a row at home. Tough game. The Orioles come up a run short. Well, we hope you can join us tomorrow as the Orioles and Marlins wrap up the three-game series. Dylan Bundy will be on the mound against Trevor Richards. Our coverage on Masson 2 begins at 12.30 with those extra presented by Southwest and then game coverage at 1 o'clock. Today's telecast, a Masson presentation. And now for Jim Palmer and our entire hardworking crew, Jim Hunter saying so long from Camden Yards. Once again, our final score, Marlins 5 and the Orioles 4. Tom and Rick come up next. O's Extra on Massive.